worries. Um, well, hi everyone, I'm Cynthia. It's really great to be here. And I have so much appreciation for Dan and the Reimagine Education team for inviting me to present about intentional communities and how learning and education happens in intentional communities. So I'll go ahead and share my screen. And let's see. There we go. Hope you can see that. Good. All right. So here's the presentation about education and intentional communities, what learning can look like in co-housing eco villages and more. And this is a photo here of Cloth Jordan Eco Village. It's one of the many communities I visited around the world. They um, are a multi-generational community, so do have a bit of an educational component happening. Although like most intentional communities, the kids who live in this community go to school outside of the community. So just to, to preface that, I'm gonna be sharing models of education in community, but usually the formal education of kids happens outside of the community in just public school systems um, or private school systems as they normally would. A little bit about me to get started. Um, as uh, Roy mentioned, I am a community matchmaker. I've been fortunate to have traveled the world visiting all kinds of different intentional communities. I didn't grow up in one. Uh, often people think, oh, you must have been raised in a community. Um, no, I was, I was raised outside of Boston in the Northeast of Massachusetts. Yeah, Roy, we have that connection. Um, and did not grow up in an intentional community, just a normal mainstream family. But I, I had this innate curiosity about different ways of living and more uh, ways of connecting more deeply with nature and other people. And this exploration really led me to go on and travel to visit a bunch of these places. And I think for me, that in of itself was an incredible educational experience. I actually got my degree from Goddard College, which is a low residency school promoting um, independent self-discovery. You have no classes. Uh, you get evaluated by your professors based on um, different written materials you su supply and um, educational experiences that you seek out. Uh, so I have a degree in sustainability and got that degree through visiting these different communities and then um, and then also attending Goddard College. These are some of the groups I've been fortunate enough to work with, the Global Eco Village Network, which is also a really good resource for, for learning about intentional communities. Ecovillage.org is that website. Ecolees, which is a European initiative bringing together all different kinds of movements related to community, such as Eco Village, Transition Town, co-housing initiatives. The Youth Eco Village Network, it's kind of where I got my legs. Uh, Next Gen, supporting young people, connecting with intentional communities. And New Mundo, which is a network of impact centers. Uh, their website is newmundo.org. It's set up to be an alternative Airbnb. So you can actually book a stay at one of these centers uh, as you would through Airbnb. So a great resource for travelers. But where I mostly work today is with the Foundation for Intentional Community at ic.org. We're a 35 year old nonprofit organization that uh, supports and promotes intentional communities, helping people learn how to join and start one and learn from these incredible experimentation centers. And this is my home. So this is where I am normally. I'm actually on vacation right now in, in Colorado, um, but I'm normally in Vermont where I live at Headwaters Eco Village. It's a small community, about a dozen residents and six kids. <laughs> we're, we're surrounded by this, this larger village next to Cabot in Vermont, which has many families. Many of the families homeschool, which is also, I would say, more common in intentional communities, this kind of homeschooling model. Uh, you can see the garden here in this photo. This is the main focus of our community, kind of the thing that brings us all together. This is what it looks like right now in the winter with our very snowy winters. Another unique thing about our community is everyone who has lived here has built their own home. So this is my neighbor's house. 
This is my house under construction. I'm about two years into the process. Um, this is a more recent photo. It's coming along. We have a wood stove. It's staying warm through the winter, working on the inside. Um, and creating your house and community is such an incredible learning experience and itself a community building experience. Um, so actually, this is a photo, if you guys know, one of the conference organizers, Dan, he lives at a community, another community in Vermont, and they came over one day and helped me with building my house. So it's a really cool inter-community collaboration that has happened. Um, this is a wall that's built out of slip and ship. So mixing clay and wood chips, it's natural building technique. And now I'm going to talk a little bit about what is an intentional community. So when I use that term, I'm referring to a group of people who live together or who share common facilities and who regularly associate with each other on the basis of explicit common values. So that's the definition from our organization, the Foundation for Intentional Community. And what we're really getting at here is that an intentional community is created when a group of people come together on the basis of this really core set of values, vision, mission, and then future members buy into that same value set. And what I'm talking about here is also place-based or residential communities. Of course, you can have online intentional communities. We're talking about communities that inhabit specific places. Many benefits to living in an intentional community. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I, I do wanna highlight like loneliness is such a big thing. Even before the pandemic, we had an epidemic of loneliness. Um, people living uh, either alone or with nuclear families. And that's not fully how we're designed to live as humans. We're designed to live in so small, close-knit social circles. And that's where we have all these health benefits and mutual connection. We're able to share resources, um, so many wonderful benefits. These are the common types of intentional communities. Again, I don't have time to go through them all, but just to give you a sense for what is out there. Um, we think of intentional community as an umbrella term that includes co-housing, eco-village, housing cooperatives, senior co-housing communities, um, and more. I'll mention again, IC.org. That's a great resource if you want to learn more about intentional communities and the different uh, models that exist. You can see a map of all of them. We also have the map in book form if you like to flip through and, and check out the different projects. Okay, now I'm going to get into talking about education and community. I'm so excited to speak to this um, because I think there are some really fascinating things that intentional communities are doing in regards to education. So to highlight a few, I'll start with La Cité Ecologique. This is um, a community, it means the ecological city in French. Uh, they actually have two chapters now, and one in Quebec and one in New Hampshire, both with about 80 residents. And this community began as a summer camp for kids. So the kids were going to the summer camp. They loved it so much. They convinced their parents to buy land and create a community. And today, this is a thriving community, uh, fully financially self-sufficient with multiple small businesses that actually are providing jobs to the surrounding region. And the whole focus is still on the children. So this community has a school. Um, it's actually a public school. So there's kids from the eco-village and also from the surrounding region who attend the school. And I think this is great because it's, it's breaking that idea that like, oh, intentional communities are at least bubbles off in the woods somewhere, hippie communes. Like no, and oftentimes these communities are fully integrated into the regions in which they inhabit. Schloss Tempelhof in Germany. And this is a community with over 100 residents. And they have this beautiful um, uh, expression. Uh, you maybe have heard, you know, the saying, oh, it takes a village to raise a child. So they say, we make the whole village accessible for our kids to learn from. So they're really uh, part of this uh, free school movement where the kids who live in this community get access to all of the residents of the community to learn from. So if somebody's a baker, they go hang out with the baker if they want to and learn from them. Um, if someone does uh, mechanical work, they're learning from that and really engaging as a full member in their community. 
Greenbrier School in Texas in the US. Uh, this is a school that I actually visited recently, um, this November. They began in the 60s, so very much part of the free school movement that was developing at that time. And they are both an intentional community and a school, but really a school first and foremost. So most of the residents who live in the community also work to support the school. Uh, it's this really like very, um, how to say, wild place with uh, many forests and gardens. The kids just run and play. And there's some structure, of course, if, especially if the kids really want that. But a lot of the time, they're just coming up with their own experiments and playing with each other. Groundsville Co-Housing, also called Yarrow Eco Village in British Columbia, Canada. Um, I visited this one a few years ago and I was inspired by what the founder shared with me about their school that they have for, I don't know, a lot of kids. I think they have around 30 or 40 kids who live here, is that they are committed to being outdoors all year round. Um, having kids be outside and learning, they have this um, like structure outside that's very open air. They're, they're out there, uh, rain, snow, whatever conditions, um, just really engaging with the natural world as part of their learning process. Um, also Retripe community, that's close to where I am in Vermont. And this is a model of a community that again is really focused on the school first and foremost. And their particular focus is providing educational programs for multiple different ages. That's more focused on um, personal development and connection with nature um, and also right, rites of passage work. Um, so they do a lot of work connecting with the Abenaki, which is the local tribes in Vermont and infusing that into their educational teaching with the kids. Another community I wanna highlight, um, this is an eco village that's forming in Alabama um, by the Masok people who are actually returning to their ancestral homelands. And they're creating whole sections of their community where only their traditional language can be spoken. And so they're doing incredible work to bring um, the, the learning and the teaching and the culture of their people um, for this younger generation who otherwise may not have been able to access that as fully. Uh, and then Camp Hill Communities, this is my last example I want to share with you. This is a network of over 100 different intentional communities in the United States and Europe, and it's for people with mental and physical disabilities. And so it's really creating a blended community of people with and without disabilities. But the cool thing is that everyone in the community has to go to school or have a job in the community, like have a role um, that enables them to be fully integrated in, in, our, in our life. You know, I think these are some of the most marginalized members of our society. And I think it's incredible that they are getting to learn candle making and woodworking and like having these experiences that there's no way they would have access to normally. All right, so that was my little little tour of different community projects that are out there. There's a lot more. Um, I wanna share with you this guidebook that I have written with FIC. Um, you can access it directly at ic.org slash starter guide. It's a great way to learn more about the different projects that are out there and additional resources. We have um, online events that we're hosting each, each week, uh, we have one or two or sometimes three events. You can learn about them at ic.org slash events. We also have online courses. Um, so if you're really thinking of starting or joining an intentional community, that's an amazing resource, ic.org slash courses. We just launched a few days ago our new course on starting an intentional community. You can find out more at ic.org slash starting dash course. And uh, lastly, if you are serious about looking for an intentional community to join, um, as Roy mentioned, I am a community matchmaker. So I can help connect you with an intentional community that might be a good fit for you based on what you're looking for and um, yeah, who you are and what you're hoping to get out of this kind of lifestyle. And that's my website, cynthiatina.com. All right, I hope I did that in 10 minutes. I think I did. Thank you so much. <laughs>
Thank you so much, Cynthia. That was amazing. Um, I love 